Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Green Lamb. Today I have a book review on Pool Dark by Winston Graham. This is the first of tw a 12 book series. And also, if the title sounds familiar, there is a, well, there has been a mini, mini series. I believe it was in the 70s or 80s. I actually own it, but I have yet to watch it because I want to read the first four books because that's what the series encapsulates. And there's also been a new um, modern take on it. It's like the same kind of gist, but. I think there's differences between the miniseries, but Masterpiece is doing this, and I believe BBC was the one who was responsible for the earlier one. And apparently there are quite a few differences between the two, but you know, the story's generally gonna converge because it's based off the same source material. So basically this book, um, I was kind of a bit weary to read this because it did come out in the 1950s. I'm not sure what year, I wanna say 1952, but I could be wrong. And the last book was actually published in 2003, so there's a large span of the series, and it's very interesting to see how some were written right after one another and others came along later. And when I get to those books, it'll be interesting to see if how closely they're related and kind of see, like, does it skip that many years as publication years in their world? Interesting. So anyway, this will be a spoiler-free review in case you haven't read this. If I am going to mention spoilers, which I don't think I am, I will let you know in due time. And if you're new to my book reviews or just need a refresher, I write my books in five different categories. Plot, characters, cover, suspense, and overall in terms of reading again, very soon, five out of five, not so soon, one out of five. So basically the general gist of this novel is that Ross was fighting a war in America, and I keep forgetting what war that is because I didn't take American history because I'm Canadian, and it wasn't required for me. And it didn't fit into my schedule because, you know, plans. But anyway, he lives in Cornwall, and this book takes place in between 1783 and 1787. So at the beginning of the book, Ross, this is not a spoiler, it's basically on the back cover or in the first chapter, but Ross comes back from this war and he finds his father has passed on, his house is a wreck, like his property, his land, you know, real bad shape. And his intended fiance is actually engaged to his cousin, Francis, and he is basically having to rebuild his whole life and you see him go through year, year 1783 to 87 in this book and basically it's there's a lot of different layers to this book because the thing I like about this book and the thing I really like about certain books when I hear about them is this book not only has a main focus but it's centered on a community and we get to know a lot of characters. I think that's also the appeal of Gilmore Girls. Like I know there's lots of appeal and this, that's a TV show and this is a book and that came out after and this came out before but at the end of the day I love how like I'm just using Gilmore Girls as my point of um, comparison here, but I like how you get to know the, all the people in the town. Like there's lots of side characters and you kind of feel like as a viewer you're engulfed in the town and you're up with the know. And this book I felt like I was in the town, I was immersed, it was kind of the same feeling I got when watching the people roam around Stars Hollow. It's um, I really like that, I really like knowing all the side characters and kind of knowing the town gossip because it's kind of interesting, and especially in this time period because I haven't read a lot of classic novels which are usually set in earlier time periods. This is not a class, well, I don't know if this would be considered a modern classic, but usually classics, it's, it's a tough line, we're not even going to get into that debate, but I really liked that part of this. Anyway, plot I give a 5 to 5. Now this book started, the prologue was a little slow because it dealt with uh, Ross's father and his uncle Charles. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. And I was doing this for a buddy read um, with um, Shannon and Carrie. And I'm going to link their um, pages down below. So you should definitely go check that out because they might be having reviews on this book. This book is set up into different sections. So we have book one, book two, and book three. And book one's the longest book. But I feel like halfway through book one, I got really immersed and I read this like, I'd say I read the bulk of this book in four days and it took me a while to get into it. I was reading like about 50 pages, 40 pages a day for the first few days and really dragging my feet because I was kind of in a mini slump, like not quite, but I wasn't really in the reading mood. Like there's so many things I want to be doing instead of reading. Well, not instead, but like I was taking some of my reading time to do other things, but I really enjoyed the plot. I really liked it. It progressed faster in the later half, la latter half of the novel. And if you like like the TV show looks very intriguing to me so it's definitely a push for me and it kind of like I just there's so many good things about this plot but I really like how it progressed I really like seeing how you could see the class struggle and stuff because I think it was interesting I read a blog post there's a blog about there's a lot of blogs about pole dark and I was reading a bit because I can't go too far because I haven't read the second through the 12 books but it's very interesting to see the class struggle because Ross is a conflicted character where he 
is upper class, but he sympathizes with the lower class. And he's kind of in a weird, you know, area because he feels like he's one of the upper class because he was kind of bred into that, but he feels like he's one of the lower class because he gets along with these people and he really res like seems to respect them. I'm not going to put words into his mouth, but because he's a hard character to read, but I think it's very interesting how that was also at play in the book because it's a social issue that's obviously still prominent. And I, yeah, I really just like seeing that because you can see that in the town because Ross is a business owner and obviously being the boss gives him certain things, but then you see his caring side. And while I'm talking about the characters, I might as well move on to the character section, which I think the characters a five to five. I really liked all the characters and I really liked how this offer. They'd have a character in a library, for example, and the person was near the door and then he, the t offer would be telling you the dialogue of the two, like, for example, there's two women talking outside this door and Ross could hear them. And he, the offer zones in on what they're saying. And like, if one person's on one side of the room, the main character, like Ross, for example, and there's people on the other side, they're looking at him. You, the offer will zone in on the people spreading gossip. So you can hear what they're thinking about Ross and their opinions, because we're meeting Ross after he's come out of a grim war. They knew Ross before. And I really liked his character. It was hard to read. He's not perfect. He's very much flawed, which is very stressed, in a, which is stressed a lot in a lot of people's reviews. But I really like the I think that's natural. Like, you don't want him to be the prince. Like, you don't want him to be the glory boy. Like, he just went for a grim war. You expect him to have some um, post-traumatic, uh, not stress, I would say, but also, like, just, like, traumatic stuff that he, post-traumatic stress, yeah, I guess, that would fall under the category. And I really like the character Demelza. I'm probably mispronouncing that. They pronounce it in the book, and I forgot to tab the page, which I probably should have. But I really liked her character. I really like how strong she is and how she is trying to, like, she's very interested in life and, like, how to improve her situation. And she works hard and gets along with people. I really like that. I really like also, like, all the side characters, the people in the village, his family members, even though some of them got all my nerves. I really like them. I found the character of Elizabeth very interesting because Elizabeth is actually his, well, was Ross's intended. And I really like seeing how the progression goes in their lives because four years does cover a vast chunk of life well not a vast chunk but like a good section of life especially these characters who are still quite young um cover i give actually a three out of five this is not my favorite cover but i don't hate it at the same time like i was I used to hate the tv show covers but i didn't actually warmed up to them since i had to get the second one in a tv show cover because i couldn't find the original cover but i just think there's a lot going on like we have the scenery like i wish the scenery with the letters would have just been the whole cover but then we have these I do not know what that is um and then the letters like I like how his name's like that but if we had would have had the scene it was pulled up got rid of this I feel like it would have been a much like prettier cover since they're not changing the cover it's not a big deal but yeah three out of five is just average suspense I give a five to five um I this book I can't really fault it like because yeah it was slow at the beginning but I don't want to fault it because it was so good and that just might have been my stubbornness and my reluctance to get into something when I want to do other things so when I talked earlier about that, like, it doesn't reflect my rating sometimes. Sometimes I will be a little more harsh and not as easy. I won't be as, like, willing. I'm not willing, but, like, I won't be wanting to get into a book as much. And I won't fault the book for that. And I don't fault the book here for that. It was definitely kept my interest going. I really wanted to pick up the second one right away, but I'm doing a buddy read. I want to wait for them to finish. And also, we're not picking up the second one for a while because um, I'm going to be reading with at least Carrie not sure if Shannon's gonna be reading with us again. I hope so because I like talking to both of them. Um, and overall, I get the book of five to five. I definitely reread this again. It was really good. It was easy to get into. I was a little scared because I love historical fiction, but sometimes it can be a little bit daunting because I don't want it to be too much of a history lesson because I still like the gossip and intrigue. Let's be honest. Um, I don't read historical fiction for the for the history lessons primarily, but the history, as long as it's accurate, is a great bonus. And yes, that's my book review on Ross Polder by Winston Graham. If you've read this, definitely let me know. Um, just to answer a quick question, because I have gotten this question before, I am not starting to watch the first series. I know there's a second series coming on later this year, but I'm not starting to watch the first series of the miniseries until I read the second book, because I believe the first, the first, yeah, Carrie, I think, told me the first series is based off the first two books. So I want to finish those before I delve into the series, and I want to finish the first four before I watch the older one. So just in case you guys were wondering if I'd started that, I've seen the pilot of the new one, but that's as far as I'm going to go because I don't want to spoil myself, and also I don't have it on DVD. So 
But yes, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely let me know if you've read this, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.